Right, hi guys. Um, I'm basically going to play a five minute game here for your entertainment. And uh, well, hopefully for my entertainment as well. We're going to see how it goes. You can see my name down the bottom there, Psycho Cowboy. And I'm a player from England. And my opponent is someone from France, Grandmaster. I'm basically sort of now in the steps of King's Crusher and Chess Explained, going through my game here and playing the Hippopotamus setup. It's supposed to look like a hippo. Um, don't think it really does, but that's uh, that's what I'm going to set up here. Very solid setup. And the reason I'm doing this is because I play Blitz a lot of times, um, and I've played for ages on Internet Chess Club. But nowadays I tend to only play, it seems, when I'm hungover or when i am maybe had a couple of whiskeys or something, so I'm quite drunk. And I've bumped into the likes of King's Crusher and Chess Explained on a number of occasions. They seem to smash me in these games and then post a video online, much to my entertainment. So now I'm going to see if I can do the same to some victims online. So let's talk about this position. Okay, well, it's called the Hippo because it's supposed to look a bit like a hippo, my setup. It's a very solid setup and it's one of those openings where you kind of wait solidly and you kind of try to counter strike at a later moment. So here I have all my pieces developed, my two bishops fianchettoed and my two knights in the center and a typical plan in the hippo, which we're gonna see now, is to go h6 and g5. And here comes here comes the pain for someone. So um, yeah, I'm just going to try you know maybe posting a couple of videos just for a bit of fun. Um, you may have seen some other stuff online. I, you know, and basically the chief and commander of GingerGM.com with a number of other people, and we uh, sell chess videos which try to explain certain things. So I better concentrate a little bit on the game now, otherwise this guy will just crush me. So e5 is a good move. He's trying to take my knight on g6 and open up the position. So what possibility should I do here? Well, I can I can attempt to close the center down with d5, but then my bishop on b7 will be locked in to the pawn structure. So what I'm going to do first is take that knight off with my bishop, and then attempt to close the structure down with d5. Okay, I expect white is a little bit better here. Um, that's what you get when you play openings like the Hippo. Not a very well-known opening, but because I was talking so much, it's my excuse to play something nice and solid. And I seem to get very good results with this opening in general. It's basically a lazy way of playing because you can play this opening against pretty much anything that white does. Um, okay, so now my idea is to play this move d5. And you can see what I've done is get rid of my bishop, my light square bishop, because I figured if I'd have gone d5 straight away and I still had a bishop on b7, it would be very weak. But now my opponent is just trying to blow me off the board. And who can blame the guy? So. I need to do something about my knight. Do I go into f4 or do I go knight to f8? Well, I don't like retreating, so let's let's roll the dice and go forwards. And yeah, I mean, I'm assuming that white is doing quite pleasantly here with queen f3 winning a pawn. So it might be time to go into hustle mode here. Um, Okie doke. So how can we do that? So he's going to win this pawn. Now, I could try to sacrifice an e5 and get loads of pawns. Or I could go c5. c5 is a nice counter-attacking move. Obviously, he keeps his pawn structure intact. Well, let, let's, let's just take this pawn. I don't know. might be rubbish, but they do call me the Psycho Cowboy, so I better live up to my name. And do I have any compensation here? Well, not much, I feel, let's be honest. And my opponent is now just trying to do something on f4 as well. So, not going well, this one. Let's try to fight back on time's low. And 
if I take on g3, he will open up the f file. I suppose I could try to go f4 then and, and block things up, f5 even. Um, I don't like it so much, but I can't allow him to take on f4 here either. The other option is to go queen g4. I think I have to take on g3 here. And now try something like this, but it's looking very ropey, as we say in England. And now I should get rid of this one. Pawn takes is the best move here, surely, to get a nice sort of file down here. And I just, yeah, okay, I've just got to try to, you know, rely on my pawn structure, but generally extra pieces are better than that. So, okay, he's gone queen takes. And now I should probably get rid of these queens because my king was very weak. I'm surprised he's done this because this gives me potential at some point to use my pawn center a bit more. Well, let's keep pushing. So b5. And I'm the one who's got to... So it's not going well here. I've got to watch out on time and on position. Uh -uh. That's not a good sign. And my opponent may even consider a counter sack here. Bishop takes f5. Which is not so silly because his rooks are very active. And then I've got to try to play some rather dodgy ending. Time for a bit of coffee, I feel. Okay, so let's uh, use the king. Okay, well, it's not too bad because I think my, my central pawns, you know, give me some compensation here. Uh, I'm obviously worse, but it's not the end of the world quite yet. And now, okay, so... It's a crafty idea from my opponent. If I take here, he takes on h6, then it's very hard to defend e6. Because if I go rook e8, he goes bishop takes f5. So that's a good move. Now, it's getting desperate here. Okay, well let's let's try let's try a, a counter sacrifice here. Desperate desperate times and all that. And now I'm gonna try to use my pawns to cause some chaos, but I don't believe this. Two connected pass pawns, not worth a rook really. So here we go, in we go. And now we've got to get Freddy the F-pawn and his friend rolling down the board. So well let's get them going. And pray. This is a prey line. Here come Freddy and Eddie. But he's got Harry over here as well, so you know, gotta be careful. But okay, well, I've got to get these guys motoring. They seem like my only practical try. And when your position's rubbish anyway, you basically got to play practical chess. And that was exactly what I was trying to do here. A bad position creates some practical chances. So, Rook d8 is h pawn. If he didn't have an h pawn here, then. I may well have some compensation, but oh my word, what's he doing? He's gone uh, do lally, as we say in England. There's a do lally move. I mean, generally, rooks are better than pawns. What on earth is this? Well, I think he's, um, as we officially say in England, he's lost the plot. And um, now he's, he's going to really be struggling. What on earth has he done? The guy got the guy's gone crazy. Um, well, thank you very much. I mean, I was getting completely outplayed there. Um, my hippo was looking like a load of rubbish, and he's resigned. Well, there you go. Um, it proves that if you're a GM, people just get freaked out and play rubbish sometimes. But let's be honest, I got outplayed in that game. And he played very well until he went crazy at the end. But, okay, well, let's just have a talk about that game very briefly. Um, I suppose quite an entertaining way to start the, my uh, career as a chess junkie online. Um, so B6, an interesting way of playing when you try to put your bishop on B7, as we see here. And you just try to develop all your pieces that I has, have done here, like a hippo. So called the hippo because all your pieces, you know, resemble a hippo. And then your main idea is here in this position is to go h6, g5, start pushing on the king side, and maybe knight g6 and stuff like this. But my opponent seemed to counter that very well here. So he simply, after g5, now maybe knight g6 was a mistake here. Um, 
potentially a better move could even have been something like maybe I can even just castle castle kingside here that looks pretty sensible because my opponent played very well after knight g6 e5 is a great way and these are kind of things you've got to look out for when you're playing chess you know you've got to look out for moments in the game you can't just sit there and be passive and e5 is a very good move because my opponent is taking proactive stance here and then he outplayed me totally um, I thought my position I thought I was just losing a pawn here so when your position is getting bad, one thing that us GMs can sometimes do, and other you know good players, IMs, and I'm sure this guy as well on a good day, is make practical chances. So by at least sacrificing a piece for the centre, I create some practical chances. And we saw this happen again later on. My position was so terrible after this point. Rook takes h6 because I can't defend my pawn on e6. Whoa, excuse me. And I can't defend my pawn on f5. So I've got to take another risky move here, rook e4. And of course I'm a rook down, but I'm just relying on my king and two pawns to create some chaos here in time trouble. So it's another practical example of creating chances. But all in all, a bit of a lucky game there. Um, so well played, Judah. Um, actually, yeah, from France. But okay, um, let me know your comments on that game. Um, I may well retire after that load of rubbish. We'll see if it's worth me trying to play some more games or not. Cheers for now.